all right good morning everyone thank you for joining in on a saturday morning today we are going to start off the new batch of ifc right and uh, so okay first of all am i audible is my voice clear to all of you you can type in the chat box yes no okay thank you for confirming see this is how we are going to go ahead um i will be giving the lecture in between if you have any doubts you can just ping in the chat box okay and i will try to reply then and there it may not be always the case that you are having the doubts then and there itself you may have doubts after going back to your uh, uh, self study right then you can put it in the telegram group i hope you guys have joined the telegram group of isc uh, is there anyone who has not yet joined telegram group of isc okay fine so first of all i didn't please share link link is in the lms okay link is in the lms you can go there and join the group okay and please do not send i mean try to send messages in as everyone not direct chat okay uh, telegram groups are very much essential because whenever you are having any doubt it may be so that anyone else may have the answer already first of all and secondly anyone else is doubt you may not even have thought about it till now but when they ask about it then your brain will go oh yeah this also i had not thought about right so that's why it's a community and it's very uh, beneficial all the previous students alumni everyone has benefited everyone keeps on repeating the importance of the telegram groups okay so isc right a brand new subject okay so first of all um rv rv a uh, finance and accounts domain uh, students or are we it students who are we option 1 or option 2 one or two you can write in the chat box correct so good that you have that clarity right so then why this subject any thoughts on that why this subject has been put in cpa it's an optional subject of course but why this has been put in cpa you can write two three words right whatever you think of think of everything is it based okay good what else to make work easy okay and fast okay prevent from frauds very good yes data security okay fair knowledge that will help yeah this is the precise answer actually what pratik has written right now all of you are correct but yeah correct sanhita same thing so basically see whenever we are going into our job also right or someone is doing their own practice okay then also they will have a requirement of some level of understanding of it all right even if i am a cpa i am a auditor suppose i am going into a practice uh, how am i going to audit the financials of the entity if i don't have basic idea about how it systems work nowadays everything is on it system nothing is manual right even if you are in a job you need to understand your domain right if you are handling some erp sap oracle you need to understand some amount of nitty gritties because you cannot uh, be running behind the it personnel for all every small thing right you need to know at least some basic troubleshooting steps right and that basic itself is huge right okay all right before moving forward i'll give you a small introduction about myself maybe some of you may be knowing me some of you may not be knowing me my name is akshay jaiswal i am a qualified chartered accountant i qualified around 12 years back um i and shripal are batchmates shripal at least i hope you every one of you must be knowing so i and him are batchmates we worked together at infosys that's where we started our career then i moved on to different companies like kotak mahindra bank um then quest corp it was a facility management staffing company then i had a small stint at amazon also and currently i am in work i am working in an it company called dxc technology which is um a fortune 500 company okay i qualified my us cpa also 2021 during covid times okay i am an all india rank holder in ca and in cpa also i have got 94 percentile uh, in far i had got 98 okay so similar 98 96 like that it was there in audit i had the lowest <laughs> 
so uh, and the lowest was also 88 so um, and now little bit of my it background also right i started my career at infosys not in finance domain all right i was hired out of campus of chartered accountancy as an associate consultant okay so consultancy role was there i was uh, very much into the sap uh, modules sap not only fico sd mm all those modules i had taken trainings also i was there in the project side for some time and uh, i got up close and personal with the uh, sdlc life cycle like how the software develops what are the steps how an it company thinks and all those things so initially i was into that role okay and uh, so basically when i moved on from that role to finance so then i believe that it helped me okay when i was when right now also i'm in a financial role i'm in fpna so my initial background in the it domain helped me out and helps me out till now because nowadays everything is about what automation and digitization any company you go they want to automate some processes they want to at least digitize the processes and how will you do that in quest corp in my previous company um i had got a lot of accolades for the digitization that i have i was involved of because that is the project management that is expected out of finance guys also of course we don't need to code we don't need to develop a software but we need to work with the it company uh, sorry it department or a outside vendor so that we can develop certain systems i was involved in development of a dashboard i was involved in development of a deal pricing system i was in the pricing department there i was also involved for a site survey app which is of course not the domain of finance i was interested in operations also that's a different thing so but i went one step backwards from pricing and site survey application i developed in and we, our it team did not have that capability so i had to involve with a outside vendor okay and nowadays many startups are there who can do it for us so uh, those things actually require a little bit of getting into the system side of it also we cannot just say yeah yeah you make this app we have to understand the flow we have to understand the design all those things are there all right and that is what is valued in the market right now okay so that is just a little bit of background why this subject will be of value to people that said now uh, what are we interested in right we are that is for later part right this value will come when you pass out after passing out then when you get into a job or you get into your own practice then only this value will come what is the value today right you must be thinking so see the value today is that um first of all it's a small subject okay isc and tcp are the smallest i believe okay it requires little little, little less efforts so uh, even though i have put two months as the completion time uh, maybe we can uh, close it a little bit faster also if we are able to do it okay and then maybe you can take it in the first attempt itself okay but for that you have to follow a structure which i will be discussing in a few minutes all right so basically it's a uh, small subject okay so very fast you can do it unlike bar after isc i will be taking bar just to give you a little bit of back um, understanding isc how much time is the scheduled closure how much time we are going to take to complete the syllabus in classes do you know or not correct so two months is there and i am telling you that there may be a possibility that we may be able to even complete it within two months okay and then if if it happens within two months then you can take it with the first uh, uh, disciplinary exam itself that uh, january to february window but bar can anyone guess how much time i will be taking how much i have scheduled for bar i will be taking bar next so i have scheduled four and a half months for bar four and a half months so that is more than double the even if we take the scheduled time only two months versus four and a half months so that is the difference in syllabus but then of course if we are 
uh, if we are offering bar, it's not that everything, nothing is perfect, okay? Neither you nor me, nor anyone is perfect, right? Only God is perfect, correct? So these subjects are also not perfect, okay? So although it is the smallest, bar is the lengthiest, but then bar has a lot of, oh, Ajay, okay, Ajay is one of the persons that I interact on LinkedIn also. Guys, whoever is not on LinkedIn, please join on LinkedIn. It's a very good platform to start building up your uh, foundation so that when you go out and search for a job, it is easier for you to find because you have already some social media presence. Okay. All right. So coming back. So bar is lengthiest, right? But then it has got aspects which we are already aware about. It is closer to our own domain of accounting, right? Bar has your uh, erstwhile VC topics and uh, accounting, but all advanced topics. That is the problem. So these disciplinary subjects are a little bit advanced in nature. So bar is having all the advanced topics of FAR and BC. So whoever has done FAR or whoever knows about it from the previous students and all must be knowing that uh, FAR was the most voluminous subject earlier. Now it has become smaller FAR, the core subject, because many things have moved from FAR to, um, <laughs> sorry, from FAR to BAR. Okay. So it is lengthiest, but then it is a little bit more intuitive, more practical, numerical examples will be there to solve. Then what is the con of ISC? Huh? Can anyone tell me what is the disadvantage of ISC? I told you advantage, disadvantage of bar. Uh, advantage of ISC, I told it's a smaller subject. One more advantage is you can manage time on the exam also very much effectively because there is a lot of MCQs, right? And MCQs generally take lesser time than uh, simulations. So bar has like seven simulations and uh, uh, ISC has six simulations only. Yes, so it's not mostly RAM, actually, it's fully theoretical. Okay, so yeah, remembering and memorizing, correct. So this is the trade-off, okay? It's, it's smaller. On exam, you will be able to handle it. Time management will be very much smoother, unlike other subjects where people struggle to manage time, okay? Um, even on BEC exam, I had struggled to manage time, to be very frank to you. Um, I got a 96, but it was four hours totally I had to give. But in ISC, I don't think that will be the case because it's mostly theoretical and more MCQs are there, okay? Not anything to calculate and solve. But the problem is, or the disadvantage is that you have to memorize, right? You have to memorize a lot. So... If someone is not at all comfortable, not at all, I'm saying, I'm not saying that a little bit uncomfortable, not like that. If someone is not at all comfortable at memorizing stuff, then ISC will be difficult for them. Okay. And memorizing means one, everyone struggles with theory. I also struggle with theory, but there are techniques which we will be discussing over the period of uh, the subject. And you will get to know that how we can actually memorize things. But yes, this is the thing. So I hope the clarity is there that between the disciplines, right? At least ISC and BAR that uh, both have their advantages and disadvantages. The BAR, you will struggle a lot during the exams. Okay. We should have, I see if one can cram. It's not about only cramming uh, Shilpa. Okay. Remembering and understanding. These are the two terms. Okay. Remembering and understanding. It's not about cramming. It's not like your BCom exam or your 12th exam where you can just uh, drink the book and then do vomiting in the exam, right? It's an MCQ exam, uh, first of all, and then simulations are also there, right? So you will have to understand the topics, then only you will be able to solve it, okay? But yes, memorization is also a big part of it, okay? Then someone is saying that uh, MCQs, MCQs are there, in I uh, in the beggar software, so I'm not sure why you are not able to find it. And then someone said about book, right? Uh, Subhashri said book. So for books, you just get in touch with uh, the relevant Simandar staff. I am not aware or I am not sure that what is the situation on books because I am a faculty. I am not from the admin department. 
so till the time you get book you can just use the becker software right online online version of the book is already available there okay so with this background let me share my screen a bit i will definitely try to explain to you all the topics in as much clarity as possible but the thing is that ultimately it will be how to access the becker part of isc you will have to choose the isc as a elective right as an optional elective you will have to first choose that okay i cannot show you how to choose that because i have already chosen that right so that option will not come for me okay but you will have to go and choose there you can get in touch with some uh, one from the uh, uh, admin team who can help you out all right so are you able to see my screen okay thanks for confirming so the, okay the classes will be a lot of interactions if you are not comfortable with interactions be comfortable okay because i ask a lot of questions and i don't move forward unless i get uh, some answers okay so that i can know that you are not sleeping this is not a this is not a offline class right physical class where i will be able to check out that whether you are sleeping or you are awake so the only way i can ensure that is by asking you questions and you replying back on the chat box so this is the syllabus of isc okay ha huh? it is over already where is the remaining okay i'm kidding so this is the only only one pager syllabus all right so that's what i was saying it's very short only four chapters are there as you can see and then multiple modules are there within each chapter this will be uh, mostly not mostly i would say but maybe half of it you will be already knowing very logical common sense based okay but other half will be something of little bit more technical nature which you will have to understand first in the classes then so how you want to how you need to approach is once you do this lecture here then you go back then you revise that portion and solve the mcqs okay do the lecture revise on the same day solve the mcqs if you are not able to do don't be too much bogged up try to ma make up within the weekdays okay try to do as much as possible during the weekends because weekends are for doing studies at least till the time you have become a cpa and uh, if you are having difficulties that how to manage time and all those things you can go to youtube search for the simander channel there are many interviews you can see a sec my interview also i had given some tips there for the how to manage time and all because majorly we struggle with that uh, yes somya it will help someone is asking that they have some experience in data science earlier so yeah that will be helpful but even if you don't have it's not a big deal right i don't have any experience in data science but i have some experience in it domain i had already done in bc the it chapter and i have practical experiences also i right now also i mean i am in an it company only so i know how the business works okay so anyway so this is the entire chapter right first we have some regulatory framework then we have data management then we have security and confidentiality and then lastly we have the soc this soc part is basically related to auditing also okay so this if you do here it will help you out in the auditing chapter auditing subject also a little bit okay so if you see here remembering and understanding is a lot right all the plus sign is here then application is also there so it's not only about mugging up or cramming some analysis is also there evaluation is not there 60 to 80 hours it is written here so total 60 to 80 hours lectures and your own self study if you give, give 80 hours i think that should be 60 to 80 hours that should be more than enough if you see here mostly mcqs right 82 mcqs are there that's more than any other subject if i show you tcp see tcp is 68 only then seven simulations simulations are tougher than mcqs that's very straightforward uh, understanding and bar see bar 100 to 120 hours and only 50 mcqs <laughs> seven simulations so you can understand the level of difficulty that will be there so anyway so more mcqs the better the easier it is to solve okay so this is the um isc background or introduction for you any doubts by anyone before i move forward and start with the class actual class till now we were just discussing about some background right first first class right okay any doubts any questions from anyone please speak up now otherwise we'll move on to the chapter start the chapter 
I'll wait for 30 seconds. I have been a part of IT audit in Big Four. Does that help? See. Okay, this question comes a lot. Not in ISC only, in all the subjects. I am an auditor. Will it help while doing audit subject? I am into tax domain. Will it help for rec subject? I am into IT domain. Will it help in ISC? Right? Or I am an accountant. Will it help in FAR? Definitely it helps because you will have some background. But it is not going to be a major impact, major changer. Okay? You will have some help but then not big, too big of a deal. Because see, I am not an auditor. I am not into tax, con tax uh, domain. Uh, but I did reg and uh, this one, right? Audit. Correct. So it, it actually doesn't matter too much. It will help out a bit initially so that you don't have that mental blockage. But then not too much that you come in and think that, okay, whatever I've done in practical knowledge, I will be able to apply. Many people say this, whoever is like from audit domain, they say that audit domain being auditor versus what we do here in audit subject in CPA is pretty much different. Because see, in practice, when you are doing a job, you will not be following all the steps, first of all. Or you, you may be skipping some of the steps or some things you may be al already you will be doing in your mind, right, mentally. But in exams, can you skip or can you do something in your mind only? Like you are doing in your job. Can you do that in exams? Am I going too fast because no responses are coming? Are you guys able to follow what I am saying or I am going too fast? Okay, fine then. So what I was asking is that we can say... Yeah, so what I was saying is that in real life, we will skip some of the steps. We will not follow everything to the T, right? But for exams, you will have to follow each step. So your experience may matter to some extent, but not too much. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the chapter. So how these classes will be? See, these will be two hours classes. Okay. Tomorrow, it will be one hour only. I have to go out somewhere. So it will be 1130. I hope. Everyone saw the uh, schedule and the message that some other team have, would have given. Tomorrow it will be a one hour class, 11.30 to 12.30. But otherwise it will be a two hours class, okay, generally. Later on I have kept in the schedule two and a half hours. Uh, but that will, we'll see, right? I have just kept it like that so that if required we'll do that. So that we can finish off the syllabus faster. If not, then we can have only two hours classes. Within the two hours, it will not, I am not, uh, I am not a Hitler kind of guy, okay, so who will not give any breaks, like I know some teachers who will do three hours classes also without breaks, but I am very lenient, so I will give breaks in between, uh, not breaks, break, because this is not a three hour class, BEC I was taking three hours, three and a half hours like that, so there I used to give two breaks, so this is ju just a two hours class. So that's why I'll give you, I'll be giving one break, okay? Uh, one break, like after after an hour, we'll be breaking out for 15 minutes, okay? Uh, so you can do whatever you want and then come back after 15 minutes, okay? I hope that is clear to everyone. So now let's get into the, dig into the chapters, all right? So first is NIST framework. Now what is NIST and all? We'll be discussing that. This entire thing, the book is there on the Becker software itself. Okay, so you don't have to worry. Okay, let me show you the Becker software also. Just give me a minute. Just a minute, guys. Okay, I'm just opening the Becker software in the background. Okay, let me share my screen. Uh, I hope you are not able to see the Becker software right now, right? Ah, so now you will be able to see. Let me just show you. Uh, yeah. And now are you able to see the Becker software? Can you see now? Ah, okay. So see, this is how it will be. Okay. You have to go on the right hand side. Someone was asking, right? Where can I find ISC? So see, here I have chosen ISC. All right, already. You will be getting an option to choose, right? Manage sections and choose the option. So here you can go and choose ISC. All right. So I hope you got the answer. Someone was asking how to choose, right? So only four chapters, two mini exams are there and one simulated exam is there. So this is how it is. Okay, this is how you come here. And uh, here you will get your digital textbook. If you click on this, 
you will get the entire textbook okay till the time you are getting your physical book you can use this one also all right i hope that is clear so you can come here click on the chapter go to digital textbook and you will get it there okay so now let's start off all right so nist cyber security framework all right so what all things we are going to deal, deal in all these um so this is chapter 1 right in that we have modules so each chapter there are like four chapters each chapter will have multiple modules in it so like breaking it out so that it is manageable so first is the nist framework which is national institutes of a national institute of standards and technology framework a framework is what a framework is basically set of rules and disciplines principles components all those things combined so that the entire technology structure of an organization of all the organizations in a particular industry works in a proper way in a standardized way also because we don't want everyone to follow their own rules and regulations okay privacy and data security standards are there and so on and so forth okay so let's start off so what happens is how an it system it system is working or has evolved it means information technology right that's the full form but actually it means a lot of things put together what are those lot of things can you name some of the things that are there as part of the it architecture whatever comes to your mind it's not a right or wrong there is no negative marking okay just guess as i said this will be an interactive class so don't think that you are just coming and listening to some lecture lan van okay very good cloud okay good system data security computer software hardware data very nice yes ai oh my god networks yes good okay so all of that yes all of you are correct so basically it boils down to hardware and software right so there are two components hardware is something that we can touch and feel and software is something that we cannot touch and feel right but it is there we know in the background okay so how we organize these hardware and software of course network can be also part of hardware software other things are also there so how this is organized into a system in a systematic manner is what is called the it system okay so what do you think with time as time is passing we are having more and more or better and better technology or uh, technology is going what do i say um technology is becoming more mundane option one or option two as time is passing we are having better and better technology or it is becoming more and more mundane correct right option one so now since it is becoming better and better we need to also keep up right whoever is working on the technology we need to also keep up right so how do we keep up with technology we will have to enhance our knowledge whatever is latest coming in situation that we need to understand right that is why this subject has been put in the first place so that you are industry ready right so what all things we will be doing we will be doing data transmission right okay first of all what is data data is anything that gives some sort of knowledge right information okay of course there are certain attributes that needs to be of data it should be like reliable it should make some sense logical right it should be relevant all those things will be there right so with that system of it data needs to be transmitted it can be modified modified means it can be edited all right it can be accessed accessed by whom not by everyone but by authorized personnel only okay whoever is required to get access to the data they only need to be getting the access to data for example uh, we are an accountant right do we need access to um, let's say the source code do we need access to the code to the software background software part of it as accountants no right so we don't even need read only access please mind it right forget about modifying it we there are two types of access right we can read or we can edit okay so we don't even need read only access all right so 
that is why access is so important and lastly it needs to be stored efficiently and securely right so storage is a big thing right now if you think someone said cloud right cloud is nothing but storage right predominantly storage nowadays everything is there on cloud even software is also there software as a service but generally whenever we uh, hear the term cloud we think about storage only who are the major players in this storage cloud storage can you tell me who are the major companies who are providing storage facilities to other companies so majorly it's aws only amazon amazon aws is an amazon company and then google is of course there and yeah microsoft microsoft is also there these are the major players right we need efficient only iron mountain okay they will, they are there iron mountain or even the others also vmware and all so but major players are aws and microsoft and google efficiently okay efficient are efficiency and effectiveness same efficiency and effectiveness are both same what is the difference effectiveness and efficiency just two three words each you can write what is the difference between effectiveness and efficiency there is no negative marking okay good good answers efficiency is about the process effectiveness more to do with result efficiency is about speed effectiveness is accuracy efficiency your skills effectiveness how you applied the skill no redundancy we can do something with efficiency for effective efficiency is able to work without wasting time okay all of you are correct i will just summarize it and tell you that what is efficiency and effectiveness okay asha what which one is more important before even i tell you what is efficiency and effectiveness which one is more important efficiency or effectiveness more important both are important i know but which one is more important efficiency or effectiveness okay now i'll tell you the difference between both of them okay so effectiveness means that i have been able to reach my objectives okay effectiveness means that i have been able to reach my objectives whatever goal i set i have been able to reach my objectives okay and efficiency means that i have utilized the least possible resources to reach my objectives least possible resources least possible it can be time it can be money it can be anything the least resources uh, let's give you an example okay your goal or two students are there both of them have the goal to pass isc okay 75 marks right both of them have the goal to pass isc 75 marks so both of them pass out okay so are they effective or not both of them correct right that's i think that's a no brainer okay it's a unanimous yes both of them are effective now one student took two months to pass isc another student to, takes 8 months to pass isc are both of them efficient one took 2 months another took 8 months who is efficient first or second yeah the first one who passed in 2 months right all right so now you tell me again i am asking the same question which is more important effectiveness or efficiency okay in this example in this example are you able to understand that if someone is not effective let's say a third student is there right he gave the exam and he failed is he effective no right first of all he gave the exam within one month is he efficient he failed will will we call him efficient no right without effectiveness can we get efficiency so again i am asking the same question which one is more important effectiveness or efficiency so effectiveness is more important guys 
because if you are not effective you cannot become efficient at all first is to achieve the goal the first step basic step is to achieve the goal if you are not able to achieve the goal efficiency is out of the window right if you can't even pass out then what about two months and eight months right even if you are giving the exam in one month that doesn't matter if you fail right so effectiveness is more important than efficiency okay second stage is efficiency where people will see whether you are efficient or not all right so now let's come to an example of industry right your boss is on your head okay generally that is the case i believe if someone is already uh, if someone is already there uh, who is working they will be able to understand right your boss is on your head he is saying that uh, i need this project to be done today itself right okay he gave similar projects to two people one of them submitted the project that day itself the other one took 3 days to do the same project the problem the thing was that the first person who gave that day itself had done it incorrectly okay the other person who took 3 days had done it correctly with whom he will be more angry the first person or the second person he will be angry with both of them right <laughs> so you cannot you cannot satisfy your boss anyway but who will be angry with him the first one was efficient right to some extent right he gave some with some inaccuracies uh, which did not solve the purpose right he will be angry with the first person of course because he gave inaccurate report if you are getting inaccurate report then that is that is more uh, worrisome or that is more uh, difficult for a manager because he will just take your report review it he will be wasting his time right apart uh, other than that and reviewing means what then he will have to rectify your errors also whereas the second person although he delayed it but he gave it with whatever uh, uh, means with the accuracy right so objective is achieved what i am trying to make home guys is that always yes exactly shilpa so first and foremost is effectiveness then comes efficiency now suppose there is a third person right he gave a similar project to third person he did it within same day and he did it with accuracy also right so he will be happiest with the third person because he is both effective and efficient but he will be second happy with the person who is effective he will be least happy with the person who is not effective but efficient right uh, of course that does not exist also without being effective you cannot be efficient okay i hope now it is clear to everyone that effectiveness first efficiency second in real life people will use both the terms interchangeably okay whenever you go to real life people will say yeah you are efficient you are effective but from exam perspective you should know this differentiation all right okay yeah why do we need it very generic as i told see half of it or isc syllabus is very common sense based okay it will not be technology based because we are of course not engineers right uh, if someone is an engineer and doing cpa i'm not talking about them but who is just focusing on cpa right now we are not doing engineering right so or software technology whatever you say right software engineer so half of it will be common sense based so organizations adopt technology to do what enhance or support business operations right so enhance or support business operations means what so it's not only that i am i generally adopt any new technology just to increase my sales okay always remember this thing it can also be to just support my current business operations generally people think okay i'm investing some money in the technology then i should get some sales out of it right not always the case right uh, the pricing 
solution that I had implemented in my previous company, that was not bringing any additional sales, right? The deal pricing system or the site survey application, but that was making us more efficient, right? So again, efficiency, right? So that was making us more efficient. We were able to do uh, two site surveys within the same time when, where we were doing earlier one site survey. So what was happening in that example, if I tell you that they were doing site survey by going to the site on paper, pen, like that, right? And it was not standardized also. What I did was with the help of the outside vendor, IT vendor, we developed a app for it where it was a standard questionnaire. Tuck, 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 they had to fill it up, take photos on the mobile itself or the tablet, and that's it done, right? No pen and paper, no coming back and then thinking, array, I missed this question, asking this question, going back to the client and all those things. So you can see that it's not always about increasing the sales. I gave you a real example from my uh, real practical experience. So see, guys, my approach, my you can ask my previous students also from BEC. My approach is not to make my students only exam ready, right? Exam ready anyway, I will make you guys, right? And of course, you will have to do the manat, right? Hard work you will have to do. But not only exam ready, I want to make you a little bit industry ready also, job ready also. Nowadays, when you go out and search for a job, the first thing that uh, they say is that you are not job ready, right? Why should we hire freshers and all? So that's what I want to break, right? That's why I try to give as many examples from my own experience or my wherever I have heard from some seniors or from some colleagues, right? I try to give such examples so that you already know some practical applications of it, right? So I hope that is fine with you guys, right? I will be taking out some examples from my own experience or the experiences that I have heard from others. Okay, is that fine? Okay, that helps you in the exam also. Okay, and that helps you for the uh, practical real life also later on. Okay, protect digital records and assets, of course. Nowadays, this is one of the hot topics, right? That how do we protect our data, right? Or how do we protect our intangibles? So data and intangibles does not only means that information, right? It can be something of a digital art, right? Nowadays, so many things are coming, NFT, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, and entire money is digital. Oh my God. Someone is in the mood of drawing, right? <laughs> so I forget this disable annotation for others because I don't generally do annotations. So someone will come and do some drawings because that's what they wanted to do in childhood. And somehow here they came, they thought, Okay, whiteboard is there. Let's try to do some drawing skills, show off to everyone, right? I'm just joking, guys. Sometimes I joke, okay? So please bear with me because I don't want the class to be too dull. So whenever I get some opportunity, I try to make some joke, okay? All right. Um, yeah, so coming back to the topic. So protect digital records and assets. So it's not only about um, information. Our money itself is online, right? Where is our money? How, how many of us handle in cash, right? How much do you handle as a percentage wise? How much do we use cash nowadays, right? Everyone is using what? What are we using nowadays? Correct. So it's all digital, right? UPI, card, correct. Correct. So that is what it is right our money itself is digital so that protection comes very important safeguard physical asset this is also there not so important for us to uh, think about but yeah this is also important see it's not only about our laptops and uh, monitors okay big big servers are there right if you go to any company you go to the it room you will see that first of all you will see it is chilled out more than outside have you gone someone has gone into the it room server room Ah, so you must, you you would have seen that if you have not gone, you can go, right? I've seen it in the movies, okay. So, so the first thing you will notice that outside temperature and inside temperature is very different. Why is that? That is also safeguarding. Safeguarding doesn't only mean that we are uh, safeguarding it from theft, right? No one can come and big, big 
servers they will steal right although someone may go think <laughs> but uh, generally safeguarding is everything all encompassing right we are trying to maintain our assets okay okay now we come to nest right so what is nest basically so this is not a new framework or new institute that is established recently right uh, i hope uh, everyone's birthday is after this 1901 right anyone who is uh, born before 1901 here so that's just a yeah nadia got it that's just a joke right me <laughs> so someone is there who is born before 1901 my grand <laughs> yeah correct so so it's a, it's a old uh, means very old institute okay why it was created was uh, first of all it was created in the us right us is very much on the forefront of uh, technology all right like china also is very much technology centric us also is india got on very late but yeah we are also now catching on so uh, it was developed because they foresaw force they foresaw actually they envisioned that the age to come will be of technology so we need to have some some framework some structure in place okay so that was then established so then uh, then they did some publication in 1995 information security do i need to learn all this no okay you don't need to learn all this uh, whatever publication numbers and all those things year all those things are just for information you don't need to learn so the frameworks that they have developed out of that i mean what are in our syllabus or we need to understand and remember first is cyber security framework okay then we have privacy framework and then we have the security and privacy controls okay so these three are there which are the major ones we'll discuss everything in details okay cyber security framework as you see here there are five parts to it identify we have to identify we'll discuss okay just now just the names i'm giving giving out to you we have to identify we have to protect we have to detect if any error has happened happened then we have to respond to any errors that has happened after the detection stage and then we have to recover so it's a sequential sort of manner that it happens so we are going to discuss that okay so there are three major uh, components of this framework the core core as in like our core subjects are there similar to that the core is the uh, main component okay then we have some implement implementation tires okay and lastly we have profile so why they have been named like that that is uh, means that that there is no such high funda logic for that we just have to remember some of the stuff that they are called the core the implementation tire and the profile okay so let's go to the next part this is part 2 this is still we are in module 1 only guys okay so don't think one module is over <laughs> this is just second part of the first module itself okay so why it was developed it was developed so that we can have some um less jargon okay generally what happens is that it related stuff only the it community can understand okay but that is not the purpose right even a normal person should be able to understand what they are dealing into right now whenever you go and uh, somewhere you are seeing that you have to accept some terms and condition right do you go through all of that and then press accept or blindly press accept first option or second option you read through all of that and then press accept or you blindly press accept oh my god swetha is saying first minakshi is also saying first wow i salute you guys because i have never read them all right whoever is reading them you are outstanding 
because it's so voluminous right and they write it so small small letters that it seems impossible to go through all of that right so we just blindly accept so that is what we need to overcome right because this is not the right way right it is just for namesake that it is there and everyone knows that people are not reading it right because it is non readable so that is one of the things that we'll discuss later on that we need to overcome okay so basically the uh, main focus of this nest framework is to manage risk right which type of risk cyber security risk because right now we have come to cyber security framework okay so nist has three things right one is cyber security framework then privacy controls then security and privacy controls okay we'll do them one by one so cyber security framework we need to manage cyber security risk right now in today's day and age anyone is there who is not afraid of cyber security risk anyone out of you or or let me ask this way who is afraid of cyber security risk who 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 is afraid of cyber security risk out of you guys right everyone is right all of us are because all of our the most important thing is our money itself is there first of all secondly our uh, personal data right our photos videos of our family members all those are online right google photos or wherever it gets stored so all these are very uh, crucial things money data even our uh, pr private information like our address okay everything is there online so all of us are afraid of cyber security risks right id password yes so what this framework wants to achieve is that we need to first of all identify we are going we will go through those components uh, soon we need to identify the risks if we don't identify the risks that what all risks are there what are we going to do we cannot do anything right if you are going to write the exam you need to know what you need to study right otherwise how you will do that assess assess means that we need to evaluate that at what level each risk is there because we cannot blindly go and apply the same level of efforts to all the risks right so for example you will not apply the same level of efforts to all the topics right whatever is easier topic you will apply lesser efforts whatever is complicated topics you will apply more efforts similarly whatever is the risks are more complicated we will apply more efforts okay and manage of course we will have to respond and do it and it should be in a cost effective and repeatable manner so two things are there cost effective it can never be cost prohibitive right it should not be so high costly that we are not able to do it at all and it should be in a repeatable manner right so what is meant by ah cost should not exceed benefit very good ram so there should be a cost benefit analysis that we need to do and the benefit should always exceed the cost and in a repeatable manner so it should not be the one time exercise it should be such that we are able to do it periodically quarterly yearly whatever but we need to do it periodically right there are five areas of focus right we discussed we will discuss again identify protect etc right these five areas so these are performed simultaneously okay simultaneously sequentially whatever first is identify right oh okay break time right so let's take a break of 15 minutes let's come back at around 11:45 okay 45 or 46 and meanwhile, any questions are there, you can put it in the chat box. All right, I'm back. Should all companies and organizations must follow NIST framework or they are free to choose on their own? So no, this is not a mandatory standard that NIST framework must be followed by all of them. Okay. Um, it is a voluntary thing only. But yeah, the bigger organizations obviously do follow it. It is for helping out them only. Right okay so we were discussing about these things right identify protect detect respond recover so these are the these this is the major part all right of the nist cyber security framework we are going to discuss them one by one in details now first is identify right so identify what what we have to identify what do you think okay let me go here only 
what as per you we need to identify what do you think just guess identify risk okay anything else data okay frauds okay that's a little bit advanced but okay risk or fraud okay fine so see what all things we need to add threat identify the requirement okay very nice so identify means that we need to keep a record of assets first of all what we need to protect right because if we don't even know what we need to protect how are we going to protect that right then the users who are going to be the users for these assets for the information data everything and it need not be internal only generally it is internal users like your employees are there right or uh, any um, employees are there or any top management is there right okay what about external users can you name some external users of our company's data who can be some external users correct vendors suppliers very common external users investors also to some extent then then regulators okay good government guys one more come on it is very much related to us yeah that was what i was waiting for thanks mary uh, no not accountants accountants are like internal only right auditors correct so yeah all of you are correct government regulators and uh, vendors suppliers okay investors correct ha ah, good summary prasanna so external users are also we need to understand that who all our users are okay we have to identify and we have to identify what all processes we are using right if we don't know that then how we are going to improve them okay then next is we have to protect what we have to protect we have to protect everything right be it hardware software everything we have to protect all right and we have to apply safeguards it can be physical safeguards in case of hardware it can be physical safeguard that we are putting some lock and key we are keeping some security guard etc etc or it can be firewall yeah so or it can be software based safeguards like as i said firewall okay and uh, what we need to ensure anti theft okay what we need to ensure is that we are updating our systems regularly in your mobile phones you get updates right hmm uh, in that there is one update which is called uh, means one part of the update is called what can anyone tell me what is that called which is related to protection of the software of the system correct security update or security patches it's called a security patch right yeah passwords also will be forming part of protect virus in your mobile which mobile you are using nadia they are giving you virus as part of your update <laughs> yeah so okay um yeah correct so i had got it but just some joke okay so um regular updates are required and then we need to have backups also see um nowadays it's simpler earlier it used to be very difficult to take backups okay i have been part of some issues in the past when i was in kotak bank right it was a horrible incident incident when backup was not taken and the file was corrupted and then we had to go from pillar to post to check what is happening nowadays it's like everything is on cloud right in my company also they have given me one drive access all the files i am keeping in one drive only and working on one drive yeah it has some issues some sync issues sometimes or the other but then automatic backup is too good of a uh, of a function that i need to crib about syncing issues okay and sometimes if we want to work like um, without syncing it then we can just work on it and then later sync it 
so in any case but backups are very very important okay apart from that another important part is discarding or destroying unused data right uh, some few days back only i was seeing a video right it was on linkedin i think on whatsapp also someone might have shared you guys might have also seen that some person is going and uh, checking out or uh, taking a photo of a amazon parcel that uh, someone else has got and then thrown it away in the dustbin okay from there he got the phone number and uh, address all right and then he was able to somehow hack right so that's why disposing or discarding or uh, shredding shredding it's called shredding of the data is very important be it like and that is also the case of boarding pass okay you should not throw away your boarding passes the scan code that is there will give you entire history geography okay so always destroy such documents before throwing it away earlier i used to also throw amazon or flipkart uh, cartoon boxes just like that but now i am cutting it off and then throwing it so this discarding does not only apply to physical aspects or hardware it has applies to even software also right if we are uh, already used some data some file we have used we need to uh, shift delete it means permanently delete it okay detect okay so identify and protect are like preventive measures okay protecting is preventive preventive or preventative it means that we are trying to um we are trying to safeguard ourselves before even before anything happens right detect means that something has happened and we are trying to detect it okay let's say for example when we are trying to protect or prevent any uh, loss right what we are going to do we are going to put some safeguards right we will have segregation of duty same person will not be passing the invoice uh, passing the bills of and will not be authorized to approve right so such sort of some uh, segregation of duty etc we will be doing right that is a preventative measure that we want the error or the fraud not to happen what can be detective is we do a bank reconciliation i hope everyone knows bank reconciliation brs anyone is there who doesn't know brs bank reconciliation it's a it's just a reconciliation comparison of two statements one bank statement and our cash ledger okay to find out what is the differences when we do a reconciliation right when we did the reconciliation we found out that our bank balance is lower by 10000 dollars okay that means there is some problem right we have detected that they, we need to I, dig deep right so even with preventative measures with protection still there can be some errors or there can be some frauds which we can detect through this mechanism of detection all right so in attack is there we can detect through this right another example can be of detection is if we check out the user logs right that means who has logged confidential system is there hr system is there where employee ctc details are there so we can just go and check that who all have accessed that system so that if any fraud occurred then we can check out that okay these are the five people i need to check on these five people so that is like a detection measure okay i'm just trying to give you some examples of each thing so that it sticks to you more if you go to becker software then you will just find that it is just this notes that they are explaining no examples etc so but the uh, standard way or the right way to teach anyway so after detection what we are going to do we detected that yeah there is a fraud of 10000 dollar what we are going to do we are going to sit hmm we are going to just sit on it yeah i have found out this uh, fraud i am so great is that the way we are going to do it no right correct 
so we have to investigate further for example see uh, we have we had a chapter in bc called variance analysis one of the deadliest chapters most people were afraid of it okay variance analysis now um, variance analysis basically meant that we calculate the variances okay but it was not only calculation of variances it was that we have to analyze that also that why there is a variance okay so that was a deadly chapter and it has moved to bar so you can think of the advanced level that is happening in bar okay anyway so uh, so i used to say that variance calculation is not a end in itself okay it's a means to an end so this detection part is not an end in itself okay it's a means to end we have to respond to it how do we respond first of all if there is a breach there is a hacking we have come to know about we have to try to contain it contain means we have to try to isolate it so that it does not spread they do not get access to other systems also okay so like you can think of boxing it out okay we are creating a perimeter around it okay then we have to also plan that whatever losses have happened how we are going to reduce it right ah answer you know which was hacked how to minimize yes that's what i was saying just now that how to reduce it or minimize the loss that we are occurring so that we it's not further propagating right and of course we have to inform everyone right informing everyone means uh, whoever is the relevant person if it's a big fraud we have to inform the senior management also if it is a small level a hacking that has happened uh, one system then we have to and first and foremost we have to inform the it department right um it department and then whoever other departments are impacted right for example hr data is leaked then hr needs to be getting informed right yes mitigate losses correct then recover right so recover means that jo ho gaya so ho gaya whatever happened is happened now we need to recover whatever we can right so basically we have to come back on our feet right you will see a lot of uh, hacking incidents come in the news right big basket uh, database was hacked sometime then i mean other other companies also you will get to know that this company's database is hacked do you know of any such examples um where in news you had seen that the database of this company is hacked client details customer details email id phone numbers have been uh, have been diluted any example comes to your mind no sony last pass ah uh, last pass so scary right last pass is a password manager actually linkedin yeah zerodha oh my god so all those so so risky right zerodha is also having all investment details and everything so so this these things keep on happening then what do those uh, company do they will immediately try to recover right go back to normal c otherwise the customers they will lose the customers right the customers will lose faith on that company right there is a website called i have been pond p w n e d that means that if you put your email id there they will tell you where all it was hacked okay i had checked many places my email id was hacked and that's scary right means many through many websites then whatever backup we had now it will come in handy right because if our files were corrupted or leaked or destroyed then we can take our uh, take the backup files and restore all the files right and whatever whoever employees and not in this step right we need to identify the employees initially itself that who are going to do who is going to do what whatever their responsibilities will be and in this step actually they will be doing their work okay please spell the website okay let me just show it to you know that will be easier are you able to see see this have i been uh, one where is that ha ah. 
this one only have i been pawned right p w n e d okay so here if you go and just um here if you put your email id right i hope you are able to see this right yeah so if you put your email address and click here then you will be able to get where which all websites you have been found right so let's say for example i am giving my old email id and i put it here so it will take some time ah uh, so see it became red right oh no pond that means that 13 data breaches are there right and it will be like everywhere it will show that where all data breaches have happened see big basket i remember that's why chegg what all things dunzo linkedin someone was saying right twitter also zomato right so all those things where the hacking had happened right scary right are you scared to go and put your email id there whichever is there with your bank account also ha huh? if you go and search that you will have the stress for the for at least another the other half of the day right so <laughs> but yeah it's better to get know that right so that if required we can change our email id in the bank accounts okay yeah true only our office office email id may not be <laughs> because we don't use it anywhere okay anyway all right so five functions are there i hope by now you know these functions identify protect detect response recover identify protect detect response recover right so this you need to memorize for sure the names of the functions right within what it is you don't have to memorize because that's common sense right what will be there in identify if you read it once or twice it will be there one of the hacks uh, that i can give you means it's not something radical that i'm going to give you but it helps if you write okay some summary notes don't go and rewrite what is there in the book but some summary notes like this summary is there right this summary if you write in your own by your own hand right there is a uh connection between the nerves of the hand and the nerves go till the brain right if you write it right on a pen and paper then those nerves are stimulated okay it is not the same if you type it on a laptop all right so many people make notes on laptop also nothing against them but more effective way is writing on a piece of paper okay now someone wants may come and say sir my hand pains sir fingers it becomes like thumb pressing right so what you are saying okay so that all you have to bear right but uh, it will be helpful during the exam it will be helpful and uh, during the exam i will tell you one more thing you will listen to my voice also okay i am like a ghost many people have told me this that uh, when they are, are when they are into the exam they can hear my voice in the exam somehow okay so ah correct so writing yes so writing does help and you will when you get some questions right you will try to recall my voice also will come <laughs> to help you out in the exam so don't worry anyway so coming back here this is scary <laughs> don't get so much scared i am a living person at least as of now so um so five functions are there that you need to memorize the names of the functions and it's not a big deal identify protect detect response recover right 23 categories are there okay and 108 sub categories are there so guys are you excited about memorizing 108 sub categories i hope all of you are pumped up seeing this number 108 sub categories that you have to memorize so <laughs> yeah so i am not i am not a sadist okay i'm i'm just making a joke 
you don't have to memorize neither this 108 subcategories nor this 23 categories okay all right so you don't have to memorize this uh, 108 subcategories nor this even this 23 categories but you have to memorize these five functions okay so that is there is no leave in that um these 23 categories you need to just look at it okay don't memorize it just look at it and just have a basic uh, what do i say reading basic reading of that okay so but and what it does so 23 categories within each function okay so don't think that uh, it is actually 23 categories within each function it is there within each function 108 sub <laughs> within each category there is 108 subcategories so anyway leave it so th there are categories and subcategories that you need to remember okay at least this you need to remember that there is there are five functions beneath that lots of categories are there beneath that lots of subcategories are there this much you need to remember okay yeah interconnected yes so it's it's like a rhyme right identify protect detect response recover very simple five times if you these five functions five times if you repeat right it will automatically stick to your brain okay okay um so now coming to categories and subcategories so categories and subcategories basically are uh, related to the company's objectives okay what goals and objectives what it wants to achieve uh, achieve and all right and uh, then uh, subcategories are basic, basically um, further subdivision of categories so that the category based objectives can be achieved okay so it's just simplification like uh, making your goal so uh, very simple example right that um, in isc or, or any other subject of cpa the entire syllabus is bifurcated into five um, uh, into chapters right further the chapters are broken into modules so you can think about this that this is our entire syllabus the five functions these are those chapters and the chapters are further into modules which is called categories uh, subcategories here okay so that it is manageable why do we break into modules is to manage it right nothing else so here it's given right categories is given okay it's no it doesn't end here right subcategories are also given but you don't have to memorize this okay just read it through that what are the categories like in identify what is what we are identifying assets environment governance this so you don't have to memorize all this but yeah read it through for a few times so that at least you have some idea about it so that in an mcq if it comes for example that data security is written so if data security is written at least you should not say it is related to identify but it is related to protect it's common sense right if data security is there security is related to protection right protective technology the word itself has protect right so read it a few times no need to memorize Similarly, detect, response, recover, detect what detection process. See, see, so it's monitoring, monitoring is related to detection. Subcategory, anyway, we are not even going to look at it. So category, read it. Subcategory, don't worry about it. Okay. Ah, so this is an example. Okay. So we are going through, we are going to go through this example. And we have the solution also here. Yeah. So. It is an example of what five functions. What are those five functions? Short form. Come on, try it. Not everyone will be correct, but try it. What are the five functions? Short form also will be fine. Okay. Hmm. Good. Correct. Okay. So already you know the short form right so it will be easier for you to do it in the exam so no issue okay so uh, where was i here now so there are a cpa there is a cpa firm okay it's a large firm okay uh, accounting and art, it auditing see it auditing right so cpa firms do it auditing also so if you join say a big four this isc subject will be helpful all right 
several clients for which bookkeeping, tax work. So this is how you should read any question, right? Uh, you should not go blindly. Uh, Falcon, CPN Associates. So what will I do with their name, right? What did I do? I directly went to this line, accounting and IT auditing for me. People ask me that, give me some tips how to solve simulations. I tell them, please listen to my lectures a little bit more attentively, right? Because we solve these things, right? During the classes itself. And how do I solve it? Like this only. We have to focus on the words that are important to us. Not everything. We don't, I always keep saying the people, don't be a lakir ka fakir. A lakir ka fakir means I am highlighting everything. Book also came. I took, oh my God, new highlighter. Huh? Orange, purple. What, which, are, which other color highlighters are there? Hmm? Um, green, right? I have purchased so many highlighters. Let me use it, right? They will highlight like this. Da, 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 da. Then, da, 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 da. Like, like this, don't highlight, please. Okay, yellow, okay. <laughs> so don't highlight like this. Just the major words you need to highlight, okay? Otherwise, it will not be of use. Okay. Next is... Hmm. Next is, where was I? Yeah. So, they decided to run a scan using the new NIST based security software for a client. Okay. So, there is a security software and they are trying to scan a client's data. So here we are doing identification of which system of the client we are going to scan, right? So you are able to understand, right? How we are using those five functions in this simulation, okay? The application scans various applications and devices generating a report with the findings. So they will scan also that system application will scan also and then it will generate a report with the findings also. Findings means results, okay? Now, the report came back with high risk employee behavior, guys. So this is important, right? This we need to highlight somehow. Okay. Ah, now fine. So this is important. High risk employee behavior. So this is what we need to focus on. And use of high risk devices as potential red flags, right? And the behavior of employees include access of records on the weekends after business hours. Guys, is this fine? Access of records on the business weekends and after business hours. But yet, how many people do like that? Many people, right? In Indian companies, in India, so many, many people work on the weekends, right? For, for completing their work, what to do, right? So, it depends on the culture also, in which country we are. From a US perspective, of course, during the weekends, generally we will not see people working. Okay. That's why people want to go to the US. More money, less work. <laughs> the use of high risk devices included excessive use of USB drives that were plugged into the network to transfer data. This is a big no no, right? Nowadays, each and every company have this USB access blocked, right? If People are transferring data from the office laptop. That's a big red flag, right? What they are doing, who knows what data they are taking. Okay. And both were related to an individual who was later determined to be stealing employee banking information from the payroll department. See, so now this is the thing, right? So we are trying to protect our system and we have detected also here, see? protect and detect simultaneously working, right? That we have detected also that one individual was there who was trying to steal data after the working hours, right? So in movies, it will they will show it a lot, right? When I was in Infosys, we used to talk that uh, we have everyone, uh, I mean, since we were a campus hire um, from the same college or the same batch, same city, uh, same campus interview, 20 people were selected, all 20 were in different, different departments in Infosys. 
we used to talk that if if um, means what do i say um we can right we can collude and do a big big level theft there right this i am talking about initial years okay so don't think that i am still a thief mentality person okay that was initially <laughs> so we used to talk and it was mostly fun of course we cannot take that risk but this is how people are looking for opportunities okay there is a fraud triangle concept that people look for opportunities if they are under pressure or they are not getting enough money um in their own job so if there is an opportunity they will try to capitalize it so this guy got an opportunity usb access was there and he stole the entire data right yeah rationalization correct so then they um utilization of the application helped detect high risk area yeah that is correct and determined the individual committing theft right so committing theft of banking information now response right this is the third right i don't know why that is not written response is there maybe highlight it so identify protect detect then what was the next one identify protect detect next one was okay let me take you there ha ah, respond and then recover so next one was respond only right so that's what it is here hmm and so their response will be what they can respond right they can throw out the employee they can make their uh, systems more robust right and they can like it is written cut off the we can access to other employees they can even sue that employee right case disable usb access and then lastly recover whatever data has been stolen they will try to take it back from the employee right anyone who has not understood this example i hope this example is clear to everyone any doubts i will take a 30 seconds pause okay good one more example is there okay one more example is there uh locked door and empty house so this is like a physical safeguard everyone knows right that uh, if if locked door is there then criminal knows and he can try to break in and steal so what we can do we can put some um uh, mechanism cctv and then some alarm that will go off if someone is trying to enter so this is very common example so not going into too much details in this and lastly again we have to remember there are three parts core tires and profile we are into core five functions we have discussed today okay yeah doubts will come right so that's what i told so later on if doubts come you can put it in the group right telegram group either any other student or any alumni or myself will respond to that and uh, okay so i hope this class was a little bit helpful and uh, right now i want to take some feedback which you may want to share that what you liked about or um, did not like about uh, whether now you are a little bit less cared about isc or not um, when you entered this class okay so any other things are also there you can uh, yeah correct industry angle also so that's what my priority also there yeah i see telegram is there many i think many people are there interactive yes that also i keep in mind no nah, it is a little bit boring but i try to make material don't have material so you get connected with the simandhar team right that as soon as possible they should give it to you whoever you are in touch with or uh, raise a ticket right 
क्यूमुलेटिव रिविजन सो फुल क्यूमुलेटिव रिविजन ऑब्वियसली विल नॉट बी पॉसिबल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू नीड टू गो बैक एंड रीड राइट एज आई सेड इन द इनिशियल वेन आई इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन द क्लास दैट टू डेट सेल्फ यू गो बैक एंड रीड इट ट्राई टू सॉल्व द एम सी क्यूज ऑल्सो वी हैव नॉट येट डन द फर्स्ट मॉड्यूल इट सेल्फ ओके सो डोंट वरी दैट वी आर गोइंग एट अ पेस दैट इज वी विल बी एबल टू कंप्लीट द सिलेबस मच बिफोर इन टाइम और विद इन टाइम but uh, will not take it too fast that you are not able to cope up right so uh, today itself you read it first if possible do the mcqs otherwise we can do it tomorrow also. okay so cumulative revisions yes a little bit of it will be there it will not be total basis right otherwise it will take up the entire time of the class itself okay anything else or should we wrap up this telegram group also then you get in touch with uh, akbar or ranjit right someone from the simander team and they will help you out okay then thank you everyone have a good rest of the saturday do revise try to revise and come back tomorrow okay any doubts put please put it in the telegram group